morning we're going out on a limb a little bit. This is not a fly that I've tied. Well, actually, I've tied it a couple of times now just to learn how to tie it. But every now and again, I just like to you know, do something a little bit different that I haven't tried before. Um, I haven't fished with it, so I can't tell, tell you whether or not it fishes well or not. But I've got a size 14 dry fly hook in the vise. This is going to be the olive uh, Panama. So I've taken my thread about halfway down the shank of the hook and then brought it back because this is where I want to tie in a couple of wings. So we're going to start out. So the wings on this are going to be a combination of a brown hackle with some barring in it and some grizzly um, also with some barring in it. So we start right off, right out of the gate, um, with this being a little bit challenging um, with those two materials. And I've already prepared, because um, I didn't want to waste all of your time. So here are the two grizzly hackle um, feathers. So we've got our first set of wings, and you can see I've got these two um, stacked right on top of each other. Um, hopefully you can see that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn our thread counterclockwise just so that it rolls back towards me. And I want to keep that right on top of the shank of the hook here. So next we're going to just turn to our brown. Um, and just so you know, the, the length on these as you can see, I've tried to make them about the length of the body, or of the shank of the hook here. Um, but I, similar to the last ones, we're going to cut off the end of it, so we just have our two stems. And so similar to the grizzly hackle, I've just stacked these one right on top of each, each, the other. We don't want those the same length. as our grizzly hackle. I'm trying to keep these from wanting to rotate around. And sometimes it's just easiest to undo it and tie it in again. When you're working um, with these kinds of materials, you probably already know this, but my thread is coming up and over to the land side of the hook um, when I'm tying my materials down. And what will happen is that will have a tendency to cause the material you're tying on to slide and rotate with that thread. So sometimes I'll kind of exaggerate when I'm tying it on and, and tie a little bit closer to my side, knowing that my thread is gonna pull it up um, over the top. So with those two in place, I'm just going to take our thread back a little bit and then I'll just come in with my scissors and we can go ahead and dispatch these stems. And I'm not going to situate these just absolutely perfect. Um, certainly not at this point. But hopefully you can kind of now um, get the kind of the picture of what's going on there. And since I'm tying towards the back, um, I really don't mind um, that those are uh, kind of uh, aiming forward. Um, we'll, we'll adjust that as we go along. We're going to be looking just about like this right at the moment. I'm um, going to go ahead. We're going to take our thread back down towards the bend of the hook to just get ourselves a thread base in place before we tie in the tail. Again, um, the wonder of nano silk, you can maybe see it. Um, I know the camera's macro, so you have a chance of seeing it. Um, with each one of these wraps, I'm, I'm not adding hardly anything in terms of bulk. Um, 
for flies where you need some bulk build up and that kind of stuff you don't want to use nano silk um, because you'll go through half of a bobbin um, of the material so i'm going to just let that hang where the the barb of the hook would be um, this is a barbless hook and then i'm going to go ahead and take a few wraps forward before i tie in my tail and for the tail we're going to turn to a golden pheasant um, feather. So when I'm working with the golden um, pheasant, um, it's gorgeous, right? I mean, those the, the feathers are just absolutely amazing. Um, what I'll try to do is grab a group like this, and then I'm going to pinch it to keep the alignment and keep those bands kind of in place. And while that's pinched, I'm just going to sneak in with my scissors and cut that off and then in theory we would have pretty good alignment lengthwise about the length of the shaft of the hook um, I, sometimes I like it to be just a hair longer just so you can see that other black band I mean beautiful feather so why hide it and next I'm going to tie in a an olive a hackle feather here which is probably how we end up with the name of the olive Panama so we're just going to go ahead and tie this in by the stem once I've got a wrap or two around it, I can go ahead and pull backwards right about there. That allows me to have bare stem right back to where I want to start the abdomen on this fly. Now, there are several things you can do for the abdomen here. You can use the thread um, if you want. Um, I'm turning to this with straw. Um, it's really a good material. I don't tie with it a lot, but I, I do a little bit. And this one was actually clear, and I, I used a yellow marker on it just so I could get a, a more of a yellow color for the body of the fly. And you're just going to, you know, pull yourself off a strand of it. And I'm going to just go ahead and tie that right on to the shank of the hook. Get it secured down. See if I can coax that through a little bit of thread control to move up forward. And with that, we will come back down um, where we want our abdomen to start. And that's where we'll start wrapping the Swiss straw for our abdomen here. Take a look and kind of see where we are. And I'm going to move my bobbin cradle into place. I'm not going to put a knot or anything in here. Um, I'm doing that just so that I can have my thread out of the way. So then we're just going to take our Swiss straw and start taking kind of touching spiral wraps moving up the body. And you can see it, it just creates a nice kind of a sheen. Trying not to capture any of those fibers. Now I need to move my bobbin cradle out of the way. Go ahead and tighten this up. And I'm just going to take a couple of wraps over the top of it to secure that nicely in place. couple wraps on the other side of it that do absolutely nothing uh, but make me feel better. I'm going to go ahead and turn my vise so I can clip this really close without cutting off my wings. 
because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and Palmer uh, this hackle. So make sure I'll exaggerate this and I'm not really exaggerating. It's actually how I tie. Um, but you really don't want the stem on this hackle feather to be hitting the point of the hook there. It's a speedy way to breaking your hackle right off. So I'm going to move this kind of up here. Getting closer to behind the wings with some... Yeah, I didn't like that wrap. There we go. And once I get to this wrap right here behind the wing, I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of touching wraps here, building up a little bit of a beefier hackle collar right behind those wings. And with that, I should be able to go ahead and secure that hackle fiber down. Hackle feather. Once I've got that nice and secure, again, I'll turn my vise. Probably goes out of focus for you, but for me, I can then see really clearly where this feather is attached to make sure I get a nice clean cut out of it. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and once again, we're gonna work with our wings. Now I do want them facing backwards a bit more as we work on the front end of this pattern. So I'll just go ahead and kind of pull them to either side and backwards a little bit. And then I'm just gonna start taking a few wraps in front. So just when it looked like we didn't have any space left, we're gonna try to tie on another material and I'm gonna go to my tried and true. Um, love the Hungarian partridge. Um, makes a really great soft tackle. Um, I've already taken one of the feathers. Um, I've stripped the fuzzy beds off of the end. And just like I usually do, I'm just going to take a, a pair of hackle pliers here and grab onto that that way. And I'm going to wet my fingers a little bit and stroke those fibers backwards. So we've got something like that. And once I've got it like that, I can hold onto the stem and release my hackle pliers. Um, and this nice little triangle here is gonna be our tie-in point. So what works best for me is to kind of grasp those um, soft hackle fibers backwards so I am only really looking at the point that we're gonna tie in. And then I'm going to kind of draw all of my material backwards just so that I can get this secured at our tie-in point. And once you've got a few wraps in there like that, I can come on in with my scissors and then cut out that balance just so that it, we kind of make it neater. We really don't want those fibers hanging over the eye of the hook. I'm going to go back to my hackle pliers and I'm going to attach to the stem of this Hungarian partridge feather here. I'm trying to be somewhat gentle with it, but you can't be too gentle with it. I'm going to stroke some of those fibers backwards. Which can always be at least a little bit of a challenge. And every time I come around and get back up to the top, I'm going to once again work on stroking those fibers backwards. And we'll lose a few along the way. But it'll actually clean up just fine. We're just about there. So 
So with that, keeping that soft tackle firmly in the grasp of my hackle pliers. I'm going to take a few wraps over the top of that so we secure our soft tackle in place. And with that I should be able to let go. And we're going to go ahead and sneak in as close as we can to cut the stem off. And once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and sweep everything backwards. Yes, including you, my friend, at the bottom. If it fights me too much, I'll just cut it off. But I'm going to give it a shot before I do that. And then I'm just going to take wraps going backwards to help those soft tackle fibers aim towards the back. While at the same time we're going to be working on building just a little bit of a head. Not much of a head, but a little bit. So with that we should be ready to whip finish. Try not to capture any of these fibers. Easier said than done. Then we've got a, just a tiny little bit of cleanup work to do. Um, the head I'm building up here, I want to build it up more towards that wing in the back or in front of that wing there. So just be very careful. Pull everything nice and tight. And we'll just go ahead and grab our thread cutter so I can cut the thread off nice and close. Just like that. And from there, now I'm going to work once again on these brown and grizzly hackle feathers um, so I can get them kind of pronounced and on either side. So there you go. Here's the finished product. Um, probably not tied up perfectly by any means, um, but the Olive Panama. <laughs> Um, maybe I'll give it a shot at some time um, out on the river, but more than anything else, I just wanted to try to tie it. Um, so if you're up to the challenge and want to give it a shot, um, get a hook in your vise and go to work.